Hello, my name is Noritake Kanzaki. I'm going to talk about the importance of sake in Japanese culture from the perspective of one who has studied folklore for many years. Since time immemorial, people everywhere in the world have enjoyed drinking alcoholic beverages. This is common to most cultures. Exactly how such beverages are regarded and appreciated, however, can vary greatly between cultures, regions, and societies. The distinctive aspect of Japan's alcohol culture is the central place of sake, an alcoholic beverage made from rice. In Japan, no event or ceremony feels complete without the appearance of sake. This is particularly true of Shinto rites and festivals, where sake continues to play the major role it has since ancient times. If you look at any Shinto altar, you'll see offerings of sake on display. It's no exaggeration to say that sake is an essential part of all Shinto rituals or events. In Japan, we have an old saying, no god will refuse a drink of sake. The custom of offering sake to the gods lies at the heart of all Shinto festivals. Tracing the roots of this custom back through history, we find that the ancients believed sake was a drink originally made by the gods themselves. Many poems in the Manyoshu, the 8th century anthology of Japanese poetry, refer to sake as the drink of the gods. One poem describes sake as a sacred drink brewed by Omononushi, one of Japan's creator deities. That's why all Shinto rituals begin with an offering of sake to the gods. They end with everyone present partaking of that sake offering. This is a typical sake cup used in Shinto ceremonies. In the old days, they used to be made from earthenware, but now it's customary to make them of white porcelain. Once sake has been offered to the gods, it is called omiki. After the offering ceremony, the omiki is poured into vessels like this to be drunk by the human participants. This sharing of sake, the favored drink of the gods, is a symbolic sharing of food between humans and gods. This sharing is one of the basic elements found in all of Japan's ancient festivals. I'm sure remnants of similar customs exist elsewhere in the world, but it does seem that Japan is one of the rare places where such very ancient practices and ways of thinking are still very much alive. This partaking of omiki, sake that has been offered to the gods, is known as Naurai. Today, in casual speech, if someone invites you to a naurai, it usually just means, let's go for a drink together. The naurai is like a return from the divine sphere. The formal Shinto ceremony has ended and is followed by this final ritual where the mortal participants share the sake that was offered to the gods. The emphasis is on sharing rather than on the individual's participation. Every single person who took part in the ceremony will join together to partake of the sake. This is important so that everyone will receive the blessing of the gods. This is our tradition. In order to receive the blessing, one has to follow a certain etiquette. This involves drinking the sake from the cup in three distinct sips, rather than all at once. The significance of this is to solemnly show our full appreciation for being allowed to partake in the favored drink of the gods. I think of it as something similar to making a contract between us and the gods. Like any contract, 
it's important to confirm the terms agreed. In this case, there are three terms, so by taking three sips, we're confirming each of these three terms. In other words, the ceremonial drinking of sake is a contractual ritual. From its roots in Shinto festivals, this ritual was adopted for many formal events in society that involved the exchange of vows. For example, there's the exchange of nuptial cups at Shinto weddings that is called Sansan Kudo. The bride and groom take turns taking three sips from three sake cups, each of which is accompanied by some kind of food. Three times three equals nine, which is the meaning of Sansan Kudo. Another name for this is Shiki Sankon, or three formal rounds of sake. In addition to being the confirmation of the contract between gods and mortals, the ritual symbolizes an exchange of vows between humans. In a Shiki Sankon ceremony, each cup of sake drunk is served with a certain kind of food. The Sansan Kudo exchange of nuptial cups involves a set of three different sized cups, like this. The bride and groom will each take three sips from each of the three cups to seal their contract. The sake served during such ceremonies is first offered to the gods together with three different foods. These are selected for the occasion and might include, for example, kombu kelp, salted Japanese plums, or dried squid. In the case of a samurai warrior going off to battle, he would be served kombu, abalone, and dried chestnuts. The reason is that these foods have auspicious names that would bring him good fortune. Abalone, for example, is a play on words. In Japanese, it's called uchiawabi, sounds that also mean strike, overwhelm, and rejoice. Selecting the right foods to serve with ceremonial sake is called kondate, a word that now means choosing the menu. The person entrusted with this decision-making is the baishakunin, or master of ceremonies. At weddings, the baishakunin instructs the bride and groom when to take three sips from each cup. The first cup confirms their feelings toward their partner. The second cup respects their partner's feelings. And the third cup is the exchange of vows before the gods. This is the traditional role of the baishakunin. The baishakunin plays other roles besides being the ceremonial go-between at weddings. They preside over many kinds of contractual events. In some traditional rural communities, the toya system is still used to determine who plays this role for Shinto rites and festivals. When the gods descend from the heavens at festival time, ideally they visit each family under their protection to give their blessings and receive offerings. But as this would take too much time, the head of one family at a time is chosen to represent the village and given the responsibility for hosting the gods. After the gods descend on the home of that family, its head, called the Toya, then distributes the gods' blessings to all the other members of the community. In some regions, the word Toban is used instead of Toya. Each Toya organizes all community festivals for that year, after which he hands over his duties to the next Toya in a ceremony known as Toya Watashi. The exchange of sake cups is an essential part of this ceremony, too. It's a good example of how the ceremonial shiki sankon serving of sake and food together is preserved to this day. This ceremonial food is known as sakana, and usually three types are provided. However, the number may vary, 
Here, for example, the only sakana is a whole red snapper, served by formally handing a pair of chopsticks to the person sipping the sake. Sometimes the food is omitted altogether, and the ceremony involves only the drinking of sake. There are various types of these rituals, and many customs live on in everyday casual drinking. I think we're losing sight of the roots of these customs, and we should become more aware of the significance of drinking sake. Japan has always had this tradition where people offer sake to the gods before sharing it with each other. This custom has given rise to another characteristic that seems especially striking compared to other countries. This is the very wide variety of ceremonial sake vessels that were developed throughout the ages. The set of three sake cups is reserved for formal occasions like Shinto weddings and the Shikisankon ceremonies I described earlier. The same is true of the white naurai cups. Of course, there are also special ceremonial flasks for pouring sake. The most important of these are the omiki dokkuri flasks used when offering sake to the gods. The formal Shinto word for these is heishi. Great importance is placed on all the vessels used to offer sake to the gods. And there are also special cups for the naurai ceremony where the offered sake is drunk. The Edo period saw the development of many other types of sake vessels for special non-religious occasions. The custom of giving gifts of sake is still popular to this day. The highest quality sake vessels used for gift giving were called tsunodaru, literally meaning kegs with horns. Later, sake barrels were used. Today, we usually give bottles. There are still rules, however. When giving sake as a gift, the bottle is either specially boxed or wrapped with a ceremonial piece of white paper to symbolize good fortune. This reminds us that sake is more than just a drink. It is always meant to be offered to the gods before being consumed. Unfortunately, it seems many people today are unaware of why sake is presented like this. I'm always looking for ways to remind people of the significance of this distinctively Japanese custom. Naurai, Shikikon, Shikisankon, and Sansankudo are all forms of what we call Reiko. Rei means ceremony, and ko means communal, so we could translate reiko as communal ceremony. Nowadays, this word isn't even in the dictionary, but its opposite, budeiko, which means doing away with ceremony, is a common everyday word. The original meaning of budeiko was the party we talked about earlier that followed formal ceremonies such as naurai, shikikon, and sansan kudo. Today, a latecomer to a party is often required to down three cups of sake at one go. This is a remnant of the old custom of observing the formal ceremony before being able to relax and celebrate. I hope that future generations will not only continue these traditions, but also understand the significance behind them.